So good evening, everybody, and welcome to the New Jamaica Broadcasting Channel. If this is your first time, don't forget to like, subscribe, share. This evening, we have with us Mr. Wesley Graham, and I will not be saying much about him. He will be introducing himself. So welcome, Mr. Graham. I look forward to hearing all the interesting things you have to share with us about the very special transportation system that we all so enjoyed back in the day. You know, so welcome. Tell us about well, the business. Well, good evening. My name is Wesley Graham. I'm the son of the eighth child of Alan Graham, the up soul and up owner of Darren Special for over some 40 years. Mm. I, I grew up in Craftsland. I was born and grew in Craftsland, Clarendon. I went to Craftsville All Age School and to um, Clarendon College, where I left at Clarendon College on my own. You know, doing all the two different type of business, truck business, cable business everything you know mm -hmm. and then make a life but <clears throat> um, i did what i had to do in the end uh at this time um blessed with three beautiful daughters and my life is i'm how i'm living happily because i feel i'm okay as for my family Ten of us, and six boys, and four girls, which, well, <clears throat> everybody is, we still together, but everybody's apart, because, you know, it's family, everybody's separated, but now, <laughs> and everybody have, you know, got their own family and kids and everybody and you know Um, my father had dreams of what he wanted to do. Okay. You know, at the early stage, what he told Because, which I can give you some of, you know, information about him from his early childhood. Sure, no problem. <laughs> he was born and in 1926, March 19, to David Graham and my grandmother. I don't really know much about what there. And in between it, his mom and his father and his father that was the was the third one well at a tender age um he was about to blast his mom so yeah and he had to by the time he get to the age about eight he had to be on his own and you fight out. And <clears throat> by the time you become a teenager, then it you know it was all him and him alone. He had to do what he had to do. And by that time he knew that farming was what he had to do. He didn't get he didn't have a, have a education. So he 
started to do farming and so he started out life and he used to we like travel from Cross Hill to Panassos in Clarendon Veer to work on the sugar cane and to cut sugar cane with you would spend like would ride from Cross like mm. there and back to to you know cut cane and come back and then farm his own do his own farming at the house where we were born and residing until he, he during that time because he, 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 he wasn't as he I, I'm telling you what he tell me because at that time he told me he wasn't he, he wasn't able to read all right so you no know, um God, God then uh, a nice lady to out who taught him to read and write and mm -hmm. he said he and all of that stuff. You know. right. Then you know he went on from there and um, to what to all what he could until in the fifties he married to one of he met my mom. One of the most beautiful ladies. About 56, then my first brother, that's never Graham, he, he was born. You you mentioned your mother's name, but I, I didn't I didn't get that. You were right. Rona Graham. Oh, okay. 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 Yes. <laughs> the boss lady. <laughs> <laughs> right. So also my my sister Joni, mm -hmm. which is not my mom child, oh. was raised by my mom. Okay. And then never came along. And in the sixties, my brother Earth nineteen sixty. Ex brother, which at that time my father was in, start interested in motor V. In at that time, really, he couldn't drive. He was he was not a driver. Oh so, no! But he knew what he wanted to do. Right. You know, he, he bought a a little van. You know, that's when he bought that van in the 60s, that's where he bought it. And Bozzy, I don't know, a lot of people know Bozzy, who used to drive for us at that time in this, you know, 80s, right. 90s. Yeah, he was the one who started out driving that van. And he, he taught my father how to drive at that time. And he, my father was... You know, where it started and you know running his little van up and down. But what really happened when <clears throat> it all came together? It was about 1968 when student who, um, was going to Clarendon College, but they didn't have nobody to take them at that time. Uh, I heard that you know, the first, some of the first kids were like um, Tracy Maoni mom. You know her? Huh? Yeah, definitely. <laughs> yes, she was one of the first. Day. And then they had a meeting up by, the, up by school. It was just got the college school. And uh, they, they, you know, everybody, voted for him to, you know, take on that role because they had confidence in him, right. which he he took it on. And that's where he gave that little van. Then the bus name come by, it 
was named after my sister, Doreen. Oh, nice. Interesting. Awesome. Yes. So that's where, where it all, the name all started from. Right. right. You know, during that time, my father used to still do something. He used to go to Linstead sometime with people, but he still, then he, when he started, he, he started to go through Hata Seat and bring the students to Clarendon College. That's what his first, yes, and he would do it like on a contract basis. Like about 1970, he bought the first big bus. Okay. Yeah. When he bought that bus, then he extended the route from Maypen to Rock River. Oh. And that, and the first it, yeah, it, it went they went to Crawl River, Arthur Sea, Crawl River, Chapleton, Rock River, North Maypen. Right. Okay. And they would play Maypen and come back. And some of the, the pioneer on that working on that bus was um Margaret Mom. She was the first lady. And yeah, and um come on uh, Brown. Oh okay. So Mr. Brown was one of the first persons to yes. work on the bus as well. Okay. Yes. Yes. And then <clears throat> By the time it went on, it began to get um, my father making progress. And he, he ended up buying an ex bus. You know, he would start um, running from Lloydersville to Mapen, then he extended on to Kingston. And by 1974, about 1974, he went to England and bought two more, um, we call them local chassis, to build two more buses. And At that time, how many buses did he have? Four buses. Oh, okay. okay. And by 1975, he had four buses. Mm -hmm. He had one route going to the same one to Water Seat, then Brandon Hill to Mapen, and on to Kingston. From Lloydersville, that one, then from him, Lloydersville to St. Anne's Bay, through, which one would go through Claremont. Um, and car and then go down Lima and go into Sentence Bay. By that time, my brother Neville or Joe, where them call him, or Dr. Graham, or you know, anybody. I know Dr. Graham for sure. <laughs> he, he, he graduated from Clarendon College and he drove the bus for, for one year to Sentence. Hey. Interesting. So, yes. so Doc was a bus yeah. driver for a year. That, that's so cool, man. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it was part of the family yeah. business. <laughs> yes. It, it, it's all you have to understand. During all this time, each child had to play a part. Definitely. That's we we all knew what we had to do. Right. Every right. Evening, Occasionally, Natty would have to drive, Terrell would have to drive, um, my sister Doreen, Joan, they, they would have to be conductors on the buses. Interesting. Really yes, because, yes, because everybody had their part to play and you, you had, you have to do it. It wasn't that. It wasn't like no, oh you can get away or no. Right. Our father, our, our father did not hide nothing from us. We would have to take care of the finances, everything. 
Nice. Which we you know, we were taught to be as ministers all times. We did not if you want something, you ask for it and you will get it. And he taught us how to work hard. I can tell you that's a man who used to work. I don't know how he do it, but now that uh, I understand, I can have a little understanding. Yeah, it was about. 10 of <laughs> Yeah, it was 10 of us. And he never complained. Okay. And he would always say, don't care what, there's always a light at the end of the tunnel. Okay. And you know, he tried to make a, we all good. Did what we are. So, <clears throat> when where my mom, she was the one there where a lot of people don't know she was the backbone right. of everything. she was she was the staller one trust me she 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 she, she was the one who hold everything together and even when it seemed like it's falling apart father running the buses it wasn't about making profit a lot you know you know you have to you do business to make profit but right. he loved it because it, it was part of him to be kind and do the best for humanity right and he changed the landscape right he changed the landscape of, of, of not clearing that my father had, uh, you know he had he, he touched their family right. you know which a lot of people still do, until this day they talk about it if you could not afford it you would be still riding mr graham right because i know that i know a lot of people who sometime when the end of the month come they did not have it my dad wouldn't say nothing when they have it they have it right. but it, you know that's and by the 80s, in about 1980, um, no, 1980s, uh, he bought um, um, Macaulay's route from Kingston to James Hill. Okay. And then the year we had five bus routes running. And at that time, he went to England and acquired more. So we end up at six, and then he, he bought two, two of the jolly buses from was Jamaica jolly bus service that was running in Kingston at that time. At that time, a lot of people criticized him, and a lot of people were happy for it, yeah. which is human nature and whole. Right. Right. Because you can't do you can't don't care how much good you do. There's always gonna be people who don't Definitely. accept you. Right? Can't the body. Yeah, because I used to hear they complain about everything. And especially we didn't have much to go on anyway. Right. Because even getting at that time getting spare parts for our buses were especially from in the during the 80s mm -hmm. was one of the hardest time when you, you know get parts for the bus yeah we had to we had to source parts from england so um, at that time and then at that time the government come in came in with some restriction mm -hmm. where if you want a engine they have to you have to prove to them that you need it yes and i, I remember when mr colonel charge came colonel charge his name that man with that little white ear in the head. <laughs> he, he came at yeah he came to the house he came at the garage 
because my house was decorated. All right. And we had to show him because well, that's how bad it was. Interesting. Interesting. Very interesting. Yeah, I remember one time. Yeah, one time we need engine so bad that all uh, these engine was leaking. Now people use antifreeze, we use a lot of water. And we had to use egg white to throw in the radiator so it can seal up the water so it can run for a couple of days. Then you do it, read, you do it again. That's how it was. Well, at least it, it, it allowed you guys to find innovative ways of solving a problem. Even <laughs> for a short time. That's what it was. And, you know, they, they wouldn't give us any license to get any engine. Right. So then in the 80s, that's when we start getting into trucks and other things into the business. And then some people I would like to mention who had to make it a success and make it was possible for us to keep going on. Like, I, I grew up knowing Mr. Ansel, the uncle. Right. You know, because we used to visit each other house, right. family, and so forth. Mm -hmm. Tony Brown, they call him John Shep. That's why I use the certain names because a lot of people don't, yeah, I think you know him by that name. Oh, you know, Devon Jr., which is Bump. Definitely. <laughs> okay. They are, they were the mechanic for us at the time. Holy man. Oh my God. Oh my goodness. Yes. But it was just yes. amazing. I, I could remember it. I could remember. I remember the day, the first day he came to the house. And he asked my father if he could come and learn the mechanics. Yeah. Oh my God. This whole rest in peace. Definitely. Mr. Jack P. Mr. You know Mr. Jack P. You know Mr. Jack P. Jack P. Mm. Ray, Ray and grandfather. Ray does look like him. <laughs> it's exactly like him. You know Mr. Benji used to drive for us. Definitely. And those used to conduct a bus to and um I see started them in the beginning. So right. um go on. You had Booney. Booney used to drive for us. Oh yes, definitely. Yeah, he, he was he, he was one of the um, the first person start driving for us and all it together yeah if I'm happy, i think he's a pastor now a lot of these people coxie you know I, I could go on and on and on and my smallest brother colin i'm giving you some people in the in the 80s right just <laughs> okay that's Erna, you remember Erna Beer? Yes, definitely. Her son, her son, father. Oh, okay, okay. That man was the man who built the buses that you used to see. Mm, he used, yes, he used to build them at my house. Oh. A lot of people don't know him like that, but that's how we, we end up. In coming to Clarence by about in the late eighties now, my my father started. Uh, he you know he he sell start selling like he sell one you know one or two of the buses. Right. Then yeah, then it came down to where he was just running three buses. Uh, he started doing the down from there. Okay. So what, what was oh, really behind happened. the whole bus system dwindling down from that time? 
well, once the, um, the taxi thing start taking over, we start seeing that that, that really feasible to run in all of those big buses anymore. Yeah. They're only surviving until when we came out with the big bad bus. Mm -hmm. uh, everybody like, yeah, my brother, Jack, <laughs> it was the talk of the town. He <laughs> run. <laughs> He ran, he ran for like almost a decade with it. Oh, yeah. yeah, something about 10 years, almost something like that. Hmm. Then, which after which my father, you know, decided he wasn't gonna really bother too much. He didn't, he, he even went back to farming because he, all, he never left it. My father never left the farming. Never, ever, because all we were going to school, we had to get in. He taught us everything about how to do in the farming. But a lot of people, you know, think that life was easy with us. It wasn't. Right. But we were taught, we were taught to be happy with, with what we have yeah. and make the best of what we have. It wasn't the future in Jamaica okay. and most of the grandchildren they they don't have missed in those type of things where they can do different things they, they do all different types. Right. it would never be feasible to start a business like that in Jamaica with type of buses like that no more it's for you to run fleet You'd have to have access to parts, availabil availability of parts. And my father, you know, he, he, he was the man who always motivate everyone. You don't have to be his, his child. He always want to know what you're doing. Right, he just wants the best for everybody, right? Yes. Okay. That's who he was, and and that we stay at at the end of the day. I love I love that man so much. I know anywhere he's at now, he, I know he and mom is this, and he, they 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 leave a legacy back here where a lot of people don't really, other from the bus, a lot of people don't know family you know right. you know you know we're, we're all proud of them. right but can you share with us what are some of the most memorable moments for you where during this concert the during was system is concerned well i could remember when the first bus was being built in my, at my at my house mm -hmm. you know i never seen nothing like that before at the age of i was only 10 and 11 you know and it was it was like just like what tesla doing today <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah yeah it was and even when we were younger and I was younger. I can go all over Jamaica. Mm -hmm. I had the opportunity as my father would never leave me. He'd always want to carry one of any one of us who want who were available at the time I wanted. But right. I would never miss a part of it. When I when I was at the time when I was attending Clarendon College, I could remember, you know. Some of the moments, you know, when, like, it was just being so happy traveling on the bus coming home. Right. You know, when, as you know, the Romas and was that were part of that, although he's dead and gone, but, you know, you had, we have like 
you have Mr. Donald Gill daughter's demons, and sometimes. You know, the bus would all break down. We have to walk home from. Right. Yeah. I, remember, I remember some of those days. <laughs> yeah, trust me. Yeah. I remember some yeah. of those days. The bus yeah. break down. Yeah. It, it will definitely take forever. Worse if market yeah. people on the bus. Oh my goodness. So, yes. yeah, and everybody, <laughs> everybody would be cursed. And sometimes they curse their CG life. So. so, is there anything else you want to share with us about the bus system? Because, given that, you know, as you said earlier, it would not be something feasible to look at for the future or reviving that system. So, is there anything else you would want to share with us about the whole bus system? I have much to say more than you know. I'm just happy to be, you know, a son of that great. You know. Definitely. My, my father was, he was in charge of the straighten out department. <laughs> <laughs> so, you have to keep in check. Because, you know, you know, you can go home, you can't do nothing bad and go, so you, have, you know. And I love him for that. Yeah, definitely. I love him. Instill discipline. Yeah. As I as I talk to you, as I talk to you this moment, my my eyes is full with tears. I could remember the last time I saw him and I was talking to him and I was telling him I said, Papa, no time oh, he used to scold us. <laughs> you know, he hold on his head a little and I just Walk up to him and hug him up and you did the best job. I love you. And until this day. No, he, he, he made us into the man we are, the woman, my sisters. And I'm happy. Really. About him, you know. As a lot of people don't know what he have done. They don't have no idea who he was. Right. They just see him as Ma CG. True. And True. you know, Ma, Ma, my mom, she lately gone, but I, you know, we missed her so much because she was the So a lot of people don't know that love is the best thing you can have. Is the big, is the best riches you can have. I agree. I agree. Definitely. Most definitely. Because once. Especially when you love yourself. First time you can love hard because what? Huh? That's the first and foremost thing you should do. Love yourself because you can't give what you don't have, right? Right. Okay. <laughs> so you love yourself or you can love others. Right. And and you know, embrace embrace greatness. Definitely. Happiness. Don't, don't, yeah. I, I, you know, we have to all do that and teach the, the younger ones to do it. Right. This world is not, it's not just for today. Because you're already at tomorrow, because tomorrow is a day that never comes. Exactly. Definitely. And for me, for me, the future is not for me. The future is for my kids and my grand. I'm not worried. Right. I'm not worried about what tomorrow I'm going to bring. Because a lot of our young people have no idea what, could, what went on before they came. Definitely. So, you know, we want to use the, this platform to, to kind of get some of that information out to remind some people and to tell the younger folks about what used to happen back then you know so thanks again well thank you so much mr graham thank you so much for sharing with us um you know i just hope that when this is all said and done 
you will do you justice <laughs> in sharing the history of your family with everybody, you know, but some really good insights, some really good history. I am definitely happy, you know, that you were able to make some. Yeah, I'm share with us. happy I could share what I can remember or what I can say now. There's a lot more to it. And there are a lot of people who know much more than I do. I don't know if I have more I can give to you. <laughs> I totally understand. Well, Mr. Graham, thank you so much for being here with us today. And uh, I wish you all the best, you and your family. Thank you so much for the legacy that you've left in Cropsill. And, uh, you know, with all the people who your father and his business have impacted, you know, it, it was definitely a, a real legacy, you know. So thank you and your family so much. It was a pleasure. Okay. I hope I have if what I have told you are the world, it will make an impact on someone's life. May God bless you and keep you and all who will be able to see and listen this video i just make it as simple just for everybody to understand one love all right mr graham thank you again and all the best thank you